And this is the Mercedes-Benz Rangers postgame show on a night where give it a rest was the operative phrase. And the end result was more about safety than the score. 4-3 the final. The Montreal Canadiens over the Rangers on Garden Ice. Welcome inside our Delta MSG studios. John Giannone, Henrik Lundqvist, Steve Valiquette. Is there anything, gentlemen, to be gleaned from tonight other than your three periods closer to the postseason? Can Henrik go first? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, a little more intensity in the third. I like that. And... Uh, Maybe Montreal helped out a little bit. They, they stepped up their game in the third for sure. And uh, sometimes as a team, it's hard to really pick up the game and get going. We didn't see a ton of great plays the first two periods. A little more action in the third. Uh, but overall, not a great hockey game, in my opinion. It, it was pretty flat. Um, but again, the Rangers were missing a lot of guys. Yeah, yeah. And it's hard for... You know, some of these players haven't played a ton of minutes to come in and suddenly they have way more responsibility. We talked about going into this game about opportunity, opportunity for these guys to work on their game and really showcase their skill and an opportunity for them to uh, hopefully, uh, you know, work themselves into the lineup in, in, in during the playoffs here. But hard read on this game. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's tough to watch. Um, the thing that I take away, guys, is that there's an opportunity for some players that don't just grasp, grasp it. If, if you look at Hedl, Lafreniere, and Kako, I, I was hoping just to see a little bit more because it's the opportunity to play together for them as a third line, and it's maybe something as a stepping stone towards the playoff. If they have one of those games, they didn't quite have that game. Um, you, you know, you want your goaltender to play better in case you need him in the playoffs. So there's a few question marks, but some of the other guys, if you look at Vetrano's game or Strom's game, Reeves' game, they're still impactful. I think they tried to carry and inspire the group, but without having eight star players in the lineup, yeah. you, this is what you get. I mean, it's mission accomplished. Everybody is healthy, I think, is, mm -hmm. is really the moral of the story. Yeah, I mean, then the eight players, when you consider the names, starting with Shesterkin, and then you had Fox and Lindgren and Truba and Zabanajad and Kreider and Kopp and Panarin. You take all those players out, and this was a game basically befitting the lineup that remained against the worst team in the Eastern Conference. The Rangers did get on the board, though, three times on this night. All three goal scorers will play in the playoffs next week, and it started with Ryan Reeves early in the second period to tie the game. You're going to need him in the playoffs to play this way, to set the tone on the four check, and to check a specific way where you're going to bring everybody else into the fight, and I thought he did that. He inspired the group early on, and you, you know, you see these guys, and you really rely upon your wingers to win face-offs as a centerman, so for Reeves to get in first with a big body and get it behind, get it deep, and Hunt and Rudy, are, they're helping here, guys. They're keeping it alive. They're breathing some life into the play. So it's almost another way for Reeves to become high and then cycle low. And there's definitely some work here getting done with Hunt. Uh, there's some indecision from the Montreal players not continuing to check. And that's why Rooney frees up where Schneider can get to the front of the net. There's more chaos. And you can see that Reeves is coming in late once again. He's roving up top. He's responsible. And he gets a bounce. We've seen a lot of his goals this year, guys, where he's gotten it through. He's got bounces. Uh, he's been an effective player. He's going to be a big role player for the team in the playoffs, and he showed up tonight. A lot of times you don't score on the perfect shot. It's just get the puck to the net. That shot was, I don't know if it was going wide. It was definitely going low, and it hits a stick. And I would say probably half the goals in front of the net. A lot of times it hits something or it's through a screen. So in that situation, the, the key was just to get it quickly to the net and hit something and went in. But uh, I thought he had a good game. Yeah, he, he was. I, I didn't check how many hits he had, but he, he played physical and. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how much they use him in the playoffs. Well, maybe if it's Washington, they use him a lot. Mm -hmm. right? exactly. And if it's Pittsburgh, maybe not as much. But he's always going to be ready. Yeah. yeah. First things first, it'll be interesting to see what his role will be on Friday right. against the Capitals with Tom Wilson in the building. Rangers trailed 2-1 heading to the third period. And then they tied it up early in the third, a little more than four minutes in. And it's a guy who just continues to produce as a New York Ranger. Ten goals in his first 49 games as a, uh, with the Florida Panthers. Panthers now 8-21 in 21 as a New York Ranger, and that's Frank Vetrano. I think that if I'm a young hockey player watching the Rangers play, this is somebody I should watch because he has an engine to check. A lot of his offense is because he back checks. I mean, this guy has a motor. I love watching him play. His habits around the puck are terrific, and he's an inspiring player. You've seen Zabanajad check really well with him, and they get a lot of offense from that. And it's a neutral zone that's always 
up for grabs because of his speed. It's almost like you have to go through Vetrano twice. If you beat him, he's going to back check on you, and he always finds his way into the offensive zone to create more opportunity. And I think that's one of the reasons why the neutral zone has become a battleground that the Rangers, since the trade deadline, have won more often than they've lost. And it's a big part of the game here, fellas. I mean, look at this play here. It's going the other way, and then no, it's not, because Goudreau's heads up on his check, but Vetrano's got jets. He gets himself pretty far from distance. He puts this through the head of the goaltender. See mm. that video? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thankfully not true. Exactly. <laughs> it's not easy, yeah. all joking aside, it's not easy as a left-handed shot to run run the puck far side high. I mean, you literally have to go through the goalie's head. <laughs> but you, you watch him play, you can tell he's confident, and also how many shots he takes. Yeah. A player that takes that many shots believes in his shot. Uh, I think he had a really good, good feeling when he had that opportunity walking in and really lock it in exactly where he wanted to yeah. put it. It was a great finish by him, but watching him this game and other games where he plays, he's not afraid of taking the shot, and it's yeah. a sign of confidence. Yeah. It's great for their line, too, guys, because when it's going, you know he's a shooter, mm -hmm. and it's really a one-track mind when it is a bandage out and Crowder on the ice with Yeah, him. he had five shots on goal tonight, five shot attempts. He is a shoot-first, ask-questions-later guy, even when he's on a line with Zibanejad and Kreider, and I think Mika Zibanejad told Dave Maloney last night he likes that about Frank Vitrano. Yeah. Rangers gave up the lead, uh, gave up the tie game again. It was 3-2 late into the third period, and then it was shorthanded Ryan Str Strom with less than five minutes left. Ryan Strom had one shorthanded goal in his career, and it was in his second season with the Islanders back in 15-16. He was able to score and tie it. And he got a little bit of help here from the stick of Montembeau. Uh, a lot of young goalies that I work with have this issue where they ramp the puck into the net themselves, and this is one of those. It was uh, one of those nights, in fact, where goals both way were of the low danger quality. Uh, this shouldn't really go in in the NHL, but it does on this one, and... Uh, and I'm trying not to beat this kid up too much. He's had a tough year because it's been hard playing for the Montreal Canadiens. And he's probably been in a position that wasn't really favorable to his own development, being that they're having a tough season and he's a young guy. He should probably be working in the minors. But, you know, you, you see this play set up here for Strom, and it's uh, the right idea to get it to the net when you know that you can possibly have three guys back from Montreal, including the goalie, and you've only got the shot to take. I mean, yeah. it's a nice decision. And you see the release from Strom, too. It's way back, which means he won't have a full force on that shot. So I, I try to look for a deflection or something. It was to, a deflection. <laughs> yeah. Uh, off the goalie, but <laughs> yeah. from there, from that angle where, where, where the, sh uh, the puck carries shoot it from the back, it's, it should not be a goal, obviously. Right. And But that's the thing with, with teams that lose a lot of games. They're finding ways to lose late in games. They were, um, I'm not going to say lucky today, but they, they found a way, way to come back and win it here. But that goal, shorthanded, uh, for a team that's been losing a lot, that, that's a tough one to give up. Yeah. So Marty St. Louis comes inside the garden, and he guides his team to a 4-3 victory. Jeff Petrie, who scored with 8.8 .8 seconds remaining in the second period, scored with 30.7 seconds remaining in the third for the ultimate 4-3 win.